We begin with good news in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. The FDA has authorized a second COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use. Moderna's vaccine has now been authorized for people over the age of 18. Six million initial doses will begin shipping across the country on Sunday. It's now the second coronavirus vaccine approved here in the United States after Pfizer's was authorized last week. Earlier, officials gave an update on Operation Warp Speed and vaccine distribution. Just as we did last week with Pfizer, we are prepared. So what does the playbook look like? Distribution of Moderna vaccine has already begun. Moderna has moved vaccine from their fill finished manufacturing sites to McKesson, who will serve as the central distributor. At McKesson distribution centers, boxes are being packed and loaded today. Trucks will begin rolling out tomorrow from FedEx and UPS delivering vaccines and kits to the American people across the United States. This comes as hospitalizations and deaths hit staggering levels across the country. Our Tom Hansen reports from New York. As Moderna's vaccine rolls out of the labs and launches toward those who need it most, the FDA's Peter Marks underscored the importance of this development in a call with journalists last night. This is another crucial step in the fight against a global pandemic. Two COVID-19 vaccines have now been authorized in an expedited time frame, while adhering to the rigorous standards for safety, effectiveness, and manufacturing quality that the American people have come to expect. Keep in mind the massiveness of this undertaking. The United States has launched the biggest vaccine drive in its history. 50,000 received Pfizer's vaccine this week. We will crush this outbreak that has really terrorized us for the last 11 months. The Moderna vaccine has been shown to be 94.1% effective overall for the patients in its trials, dropping to 86.4% for those 65 and older. Like Pfizer, it requires two doses. Dr. Gia Tyson, a Louisiana gastroenterologist and transplant hepatologist, received her first dose Thursday. How are you feeling today? I feel great. A little arm soreness, but that's it. Otherwise, I ran uh, 3.2 miles this morning. But for the vaccine to be effective, there has to be widespread approval by a public willing to get the shots. This is really our way out, um, and we are in this together, and so we have to get out of this together. And the vaccine is a crucial um, part of us kind of trying to get life back to normal. The vaccines arrive as 3,000 people a day die in the U.S. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. We are getting crushed. In California, there have been 150,000 new cases in just the last three days. Southern California hospitals are out of regular ICU beds. In the north, a preventive emergency alert went out Friday, telling 7 million people in the San Francisco area to stay home. One shocking projection, 68,000 deaths could take place in California and more than 560,000 nationwide by April 1st. As promising as these new vaccines are, people and their behaviors are still the most hopeful way of stopping the spread. You've been on the front lines for an exhausting nine months. How significant is it that we now have two vaccines that have cleared FDA hurdles? It's wonderful. Um, I'm not sure how much really the general population understands the significance you know, of this. And with the end of 2020 approaching, Americans are being urged to stay home and only socialize in smaller groups. The surge that we're seeing now with more than 3,000 Americans dead each day is in part linked to Thanksgiving when millions of Americans travel. Lana. Thank you, Tom. For more on this now, I want to bring in Dr. Bruce Y. Lee. He's a professor of health policy and management at the City University of New York. He's also the executive director of public health, computational, and operations research there as well. Dr. Lee, thank you for joining us with two vaccines now available. How will that impact the number of doses that are given out? And will this change the timeline for when people are actually able to get vaccinated? Well, it certainly helps to have two different manufacturers uh, producing COVID-19 vaccines because, you know, there's going to be inevitably uh, delays or changes in terms of the production schedules for each of the uh, different vaccines. So now we have 
two different possibilities that can then help level off some of those different um, production delays and challenges. Uh, also, the vaccines are different in, in terms of their characteristics, their storage characteristics. So the Moderna, Moderna vaccine, for example, requires uh, uh, less uh, deep freeze conditions. So you can store it under uh, negative four degrees Fahrenheit instead of negative 94. So that increases the flexibility of places that can actually deliver the vaccine. Um, Dr. Lee, uh, we've heard mostly about the differences in the storage capabilities of the two vaccines. Can you tell us about any other differences between the two? And will people have the ability to choose if they want one vaccine over the other, or is it a you get what you get sort of situation? Well, so currently <laughs> there are several differences. So one is, of course, the storage, different storage requirements. Uh, two is there's going to be differences in terms of the intervals between getting the first dose and the second dose. So for the Pfizer vaccine, you get your first dose and then you wait 21 days and then you have to return for the second dose. And then for the Moderna vaccine, first dose and then wait 28 days, so an additional week to get the second dose. So that may make a difference in terms of timing and kind of scheduling the, the two different doses. There's also differences currently in terms of your age range. So uh, if you uh, want to get the Moderna vaccine, you have to be 18 years or older. To get the Pfizer vaccine, you could be 16 years or older. Now, that's just a, a function of who happened to be enrolled in the trials, the clinical trials. So that may change in the near future because Moderna is testing the vaccine in, in 12 to 17 year old uh, folk. There are also differences in terms of the uh, number of uh, the amount of vaccine in each of the vials and the number of doses per vial. So, th for instance, the Pfizer vaccine has five doses per vial and the Moderna has 10 doses per vial. That can make a difference in terms of you know how you time the doses and also uh, basically you know how many doses you sort of store in a location. So there are these logistics differences. Now, in terms of selecting the the uh, vaccine, there may be many situations where you walk in and it's not like a menu. You can't you know order. You know, I'll have uh, this vaccine and some avocado toast or something of that sort. You, right. you basically <laughs> might be stuck with whatever vaccine happens to be uh, delivered at that location. Are we seeing, it seems like most of the differences that have been identified so far have been really those logistical differences. Um, they're pretty close in terms of efficacy. Uh, have we noticed any differences in terms of side effects that are being reported? So far, no. I mean, of course, there's more information when it comes to the Pfizer vaccine because the Pfizer vaccine has already been rolled out to some degree. So you hear these reports of there's been some allergic reactions. And so, but that's going to be expected when we come out with the uh, Moderna vaccine. In terms of the clinical trial, there are no real significant differences between the side effects uh, you know, seen with both vaccines. Of course, you know, what's going to be really important is to monitor the side effects as things move along. So we have to keep in mind that even though these went through clinical trials, you have to continue to follow what's happening with, in the field, because many times when you actually roll out something in real life, uh, it you know, things can act a little bit differently when they're in the uh, real world or the field. So we have to continue to track those things as well. Well, you've worked on vaccine delivery and supply chain efforts for years. So I'm, I'm really glad that you're here today, especially since we just heard uh, General Perna today um, talk about uh, actually apologize, really, for some miscommunications um, about how many vaccine doses were going to be sent to states. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering um, if you can explain a little bit about the challenges uh, for these vaccines specifically and how the distribution efforts have gone so far. If you can, if you can shed any light, really, on, uh, on what we heard about, um, about the stamp of approval initially saying that there were going to be more doses of these vaccines rolled out to states uh, than actually were able to, to be sent. Yeah, so we have to keep in mind that this is a very, very complex operation. Uh, there's been a lot of news and focus on developing the vaccines, and we've seen this in the past. You know, many times the focus can be on developing the vaccines and getting it to market, and also maybe figuring out how it, they're going to be paid for, how they're going to be supported financially. But many times uh, the aspect of vaccination that's overlooked is the actual rollout and the delivery and the supply chains and administration of the vaccine. We have to keep in mind these are really important because if you know, a vaccine can be available, but people actually don't get them, then the vaccine will not be able to make a difference in terms of the pandemic. 
Uh, and we have to keep in mind, it has to be like the broad population, not, not just selected folks. So, so it really requires a lot of coordination uh, at the national level to bring everyone together. Uh, it, it, it's equivalent to you know, running out on the field for a football game. And so you need to have a game plan. You know, all the players need to really understand what they need to do and how to work with each other. So communication is very important. So when you have these uh, hiccups like, you know, vaccines supposedly sitting in the warehouse and not knowing, you know, where they're going to be delivered and people not knowing where uh, and when the vaccines are actually going to arrive and how many doses and getting these changes, you know, that's a sign that there's not enough communication that's going on from a national basis because we have to remind uh, remember that this is a complex series of events that can have repercussions so everyone has to be prepared like healthcare personnel who are going to deliver the vaccine or administer the vaccine to individual people you know they have other things to do so they have to be ready and they have to know you know how many vaccines will I be deliver, uh, administering you know roughly you know when do I need to be available so when there are changes in terms of these um, uh, the number of doses that will go to states, that has a trickle-down effect. So what we really need to have is greater communication and greater coordination nationally to make sure that these are being um, uh, delivered properly. Because there can be many situations yeah. also where you have bottlenecks and vaccines can be delivered too many to one place and too few to other places. It is incredible to see how uh, the healthcare providers, hospitals, uh, and experts like you have been able to, to uh, change uh, along with these changing circumstances. All right, Dr. Bruce Wiley, thank you. Thank you.